Hey Patreon, it's Genghis. Um, today I wanted to do a, a video on drawing, more specifically drawing pinups. Um, I wanted to start off with uh, the windows to the soul, which are the eyes. Um, I think I'm going to do like a series of different um, eye angles. Um, I'm going to start off today with doing an angle that I like, an angle that really looks good, which is what I call a three-quarter view. I kind of picked up that term, uh, drawing with artists, as, um, as a caricature artist, we'd always call them a three-quarter view. When we draw caricatures, that seemed to be the best angle um, to draw somebody at. So, uh, as you, when you look at some of my pinup work, you'll see that a lot of the times it's that angle. Sometimes I'll do uh, faces that are kind of head-on, but for the most part, um, slightly turned to the side. It, was, it always looks best, so we'll start off with that. I will post a series of videos, though, um, of eyes and uh, eventually the full face in different angles, but right now we'll do that angle. Um, so one thing you have to know about how I draw is um, I don't draw how it's taught in school. So usually when you take an art class, they teach you how to do something kind of like this, where you draw the outside of the head, and you do a center vertical line and then you do a line in the middle of that head shape and that's usually where the eyes go. Um, I've been drawing ever since I was really young. I was never taught this until I went to um, high school and started doing a, a bunch of art classes. Um, it was really actually kind of hard for me to pick this up. Sometimes I'll do it this way just to see the head like if I'm doing you know a pinup or whatever I'll do this so I can kind of just gauge how big her head should be compared to the rest of her body. But usually I find that when I start to fill everything out um, up inside of the, in the face, um, it kind of becomes a little unproportioned. <laughs> um, and I think that's partly because I didn't learn how to draw that way. So unfortunately, I will not be showing you how to draw faces like this because again, I'm not good at drawing faces like that. I'm kind of good at just going with everything else that I do. Um, just, just fucking do it. Okay, so we're going to start off with an eye and then another eye because usually people have two freaking eyes. Um, but one thing that you'll notice with a three-quarter view is that one eye tends to look a little bigger than the other. The eye that's closest to the audience is the one that's gonna look more full and a little bit more open, whereas the one that's kind of further away from the audience, which would be behind your nose, um, is a little bit smaller and kind of odd shaped. So, we're gonna start off with the first eyeball. I like to kind of use, um, usually when I draw eyes, the starting off line that I use I tend to make the eyes look just a little bit more slanted. I don't know if it's because that's kind of how my eyes are kind of shaped, but that's kind of how I usually do them. So when I'm trying to do like a very sexy, seductive pinup, um, I try to give her cat eyes. Cat eyes t tend to be pretty hot and um, I usually stick to those. So we'll do the upper line solid, okay? So when I get to the bottom line, the, uh, the lower lid, I do something that kind of suggests um, thickness in the skin. So I do a single line for the upper upper line, which would be like where you're, uh, I don't know, where she's wearing makeup, that's would be her eyeliner. And so when I do the bottom line, I do the lid where the eyelashes would be, but then I do a secondary line, kind of doubling it up. Okay, so this right here usually implies that there's like a, a sort of like a skin thickness. Um, when you're doing pinups that are kind of a little bit more lifelike, even if they're kind of cartoony, you always want to suggest a softness. Women are soft, and so I personally like to make things that suggest that if you were to touch her, you know, her skin would dent in. And um, Usually with skin, you know, skin has a certain kind of thickness. I like to kind of imply that with the eyeball. So that's that's how I do it. Okay. So with the eyelashes, because I'm giving, give, giving her more of a, a cat eye, I tend to make the eyelashes towards the sides a little bit longer 
than the ones towards the middle. So we'll fill this in, fill this in. And as they get kind of closer to like, I don't know, the corners of the eyes, the inner corner of the eye, they tend to get a little shorter. And that's because usually when you have a cat eye, it makes like this nice little sharp little um, shape towards the end. And you want to kind of keep that shape by making the eyelashes a little bit more heavy towards the edges, okay? And so we're gonna give her also kind of a double lid. Also kind of implying a certain kind of thickness when it comes to the skin, skin folds. So usually the rule of thumb when you're doing people is that the more lines you do on a person's face, the older they look. Um, usually the lines, when I'm drawing a woman, um, the lines are kind of more concentrated towards the eyes, the hair, you'll see some strokes. Uh, kind of a little bit on the nose, a little bit on the, on the lips, but that's pretty much about it. Like if you start adding lines all over her face, like even if it's like crow's feet because she's like squint, squinting when she smiles, um, it'll make her look just a little older. So unless you're doing somebody who's a little bit older, I would refrain from putting too many lines on the face. But, you know, as far as like, you know, uh, eyelashes and stuff like that are concerned, line it away. So let's give her some lower lashes. So those lower lashes are going to hug towards the the um the the uh, line that's like um at the bottom because that's where her lash line would be. This line that's kind of more um above that line, that is the part of the skin that connects to the actual eyeball. You don't really grow lashes there, so we're not going to put lashes there. So, I don't know what this little thing in the eye, that little thing right there that people have on their eyeballs are called, but I usually put like a little line there to kind of imply that that's there. We're actually gonna bounce shading off of that, so that's kind of an important line. And so we want to also um, give her eye like kind of a glisten. It kind of implies that it's wet. Um, we like wet eyes. Um, when I do, when I um, tattoo pinups, I'll even put like a little uh, white sort of like glisten there um, just to, so you can see there's a little bit more wetness in the eye. And it doesn't really make them look like they're crying. It just makes them look like they're a little bit more alive. Um, even if they're cartoony, little details like that really does help um, when you're trying to make something appear that it is, it is alive. So I usually start with the pupil. And instead of filling in the pupil solid, I kind of leave... A little opening right there to kind of imply that 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 her eye there's a was it shine coming from her eyeball which basically implies that the eyes are glossy and therefore wet so after that I add um, the uh, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank the um the iris to the eye and even that you know so what I also like to do with eyes, um, because she has such a, a heavy sort of upper eyelash thing kind of going on, I imply that, um, that, that, that there's kind of a shadow over her eye because her eyelashes are so long by making the lines thicker, but then sort of fade a little bit thinner as they go down. And so lines that don't connect, but kind of imply that they're, connecting are called implied lines. I essentially do what's called an impl implied line when I do the eye, the insides of the eyes. So with that being said, when I do the shading to kind of imply a little bit more of a heavier um, lash line, I'll shade down like this. Don't shade where the glisten is though in the pupil, but I'll shade down like this and it makes it look like the lashes are coming off of the eye a little bit more and it implies that she does indeed have extremely long lashes. So also we want to add a little bit of color to her eye. So we do kind of the same thing where there's more shading towards the top and as it goes towards the bottom, it gets a little lighter. Okay, 
So, all right. So now when I tattoo pinups, when I tattoo eyes like this, I kind of have a little bit more of an advantage when it comes to um, adding uh, glisten and highlights and stuff. So sometimes what, what you'll see me do when I'm doing pinup eyes is I do kind of a little bit of a gap. I do a gap in her eyeliner. I do a little gap in her in her pupil. And then I do a little bit of a gap down here in shading. And what I'll go back and do is I'll add white highlights here, here, and here. And what that does is it kind of makes the eye pop a little bit. It gives it a little bit more life. Um, when ladies put makeup on, you know, we always want a matted sort of look. And so we try to make sure that our makeup's not shiny. I find that when I do this to the eyes, and it's only the eyes that I'll do this to, and I'll add, you know, some, some highlights to the lips as well. But when I do that to the eyes, it makes them also look a little bit more alive, you know. Um, and uh, so we'll give her some um, eyeshadow. Just a little bit. I can't really smudge it with my fingers because my nail, but kind of keeping sort of that kind of cat eye look, that that shape, that nice little sharp shape down at the at the at the edges over here. And so also too, where I'll also leave that gap is also in the eyebrows. So the eyebrows to kind of like um make the eyebrows look a little bit more lifelike, I'll add like a couple of lines that sort of imply that there is actually indeed hair in her brows. And then the rest of the brow is just kind of a solid line, but I will leave a gap. So it'll look something like this. So I'll add a couple of lines and then I'll shape the eyebrow out. And you wanna give her a nice little arch. We live for the arches and eyebrows. When I say we, I mean women, okay? So her eye, eyebrow will look like this. So I'll go back, not where I put like the little hair lines, but everything else. I'll go back and I'll shade it. Right about where the arch is at, that's where I tend to kind of leave sort of a, a kind of almost like a highlight gap. Usually only when I'm tattooing, I don't know why I love that look, but I do. And I know not a lot of people do that, but I do. If you go back and see some of the pinups that I've done, they always have like this little gap in their brow. And it's to kind of to sort of imply sort of shine on that brow bone without actually putting like too much shine on her brow bone. Because, you know, men tend to have heavier brow bones and you don't really want her brow to be too heavy but at the same time I want to kind of imply that her face does have a curve there is a brow bone there and so how I personally usually do it is that I'll just leave kind of a highlight right there and I'll even go back if I'm tattooing and add the actual highlight with white right there that way you can kind of see a little bit more of the glisten and so since we're we're trying to give 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 a little bit of meat in here, usually when you have an eyeball, you have a little bit of meat above your your eyelid, um, right below the brow bone. And so, in order to do that, we don't shade the actual brow bone. We shade where it's a little bit more hollow, where there isn't as much meat, which is about here. Not though where the bridge would be. But like kind of, um, I don't know, the gap between your eye and where your nose starts. That's my, that's my, sorry about that. I my roommate came home and so the dog got excited. So uh, where were we? So, um, so adding the shading uh, to the bridge of the nose. And so I do that to kind of just sort of just mark, you know, where the next eye is going to be. And so she's, since she's kind of looking at sort of an angle, uh, we're going to start on the other eye. So again, because I wasn't really trained to do things um, how it's taught in school, I hope you can forgive me for not being able to really explain how I do things. I just kind of do them. 
um, I've kind of learned really well the angles of the face without really needing guidelines all that much. Um, but how I kind of use guides for myself is marking where things are. So even though with this eye, I did this eye first and then I did the eyebrow, sometimes it's easier for me to kind of gauge where the next eye is supposed to go. If I go ahead and do the um, eyebrow that's kind of on this opposite. Um, so I'm supposed to be doing another free-handed pinup and and when you watch how I do them, a lot of times you'll see me making little light marks on the skin that aren't really um, dark enough to really be anything. And those little guide marks are just kind of just like the little little light skin cuts. They're kind of just like marks for me to be able to gauge the next step. Um, I think uh, when I did uh, the one for Paul, the first one that I did, I kind of like did like a little thing like this before I started with the nose. Well, that little thing that I was doing was the top of the nose before I started the bottom of the nose, you know. So I'll do little things like that. So like sometimes when you see me doing stuff like that, you'll be like, what is she doing? Well, it's me trying to get a grasp of the of the next step before I make any permanent marks on people's skin, especially if I'm doing a... Um, a free-handed pinup because you know when you mess up on skin you can't you kind of can't take it back so all right so you'll see now how these two eyes will look a little different as far as shape so with this eye you're not going to really get the luxury of really implying the whole cat eye thing the whole cat eye thing kind of works with this one it's not going to work with this one so much because when eyes are turned at a certain angle you won't see this part of the eye you'll see maybe up to here before you see the side of the eyeball and this part of the eye kind of disappears. So you'll see that with this one. So this eye, kind of come out a little bit more rounded here. So this one's kind of a little bit more angular or angled right there. This one's kind of a little bit more rounder. Okay. And it's the same thing too with the gaps, all the glistens and stuff like that. I'll still do like the little eye eyeliner sort of um, glisteny eyeball sort of gap thing. And so with this one, again, you won't get this little connecting part of the eye. What you will get though is the eyeball. So basically, I just add the side of the eyeball onto this eye like that. Um, and so because I like to have like the more dramatic look with the eyelashes, what I'll do is I will drop this like um, this upper lid down a little bit. And it kind of gives me an excuse to make that thick sort of eyelash on the edge of that eyeball. Okay. Give her an eyelid. Again, I apologize if this is confusing because of the way I haven't been trained in drawing, but this is how I've been doing it for years. Um, it's always been kind of hard to explain what I'm doing because, especially if you have been to art school and you've been trained a certain way, um, it is really hard for me to kind of put it in terms where people understand it. Um, I actually have been marked down a couple grades in art school because of how I draw. Um, you know, teachers always want you to be able to kind of like, they want to know that you understand how they do things and stuff. And unfortunately, it kind of didn't work out that way with me. Anyways, um, okay, so we have that part of the eye. And so we want to add... The pupil so the interesting thing about the pupil and the iris of the eye pupils too close together she'll look a little cross-eyed this one just a little bit off she'll start to look cockeyed um that's kind of just something that you you kind of have to play with when it comes to eyes um if you do them enough you'll definitely start to get the spacing accurately um so all right so Add this part. Okay. 
Nice. Lower lid. So the lower lid, it's the same thing. You kind of want to give the implication that she's got meat. There's a little bit of a thickness when it comes to her lower, lower lid. Add some eyelashes. Okay. And some shadows. Just like we did on the other one. And I'll zoom in too. I, the only reason why I have the camera so far away or up is because I was afraid that I was going to start moving the page. I think I've done pretty good not moving the damn page, but you know. Uh, you never damn know. All right, so now that we have her basic kind of like set of eyes on there, I'll go back sometimes and just add, you know, to it to kind of darken it up. Same thing with this. We'll go ahead and give her some hair, darken up that hair, darken up those brows. I'm not really using drawing pencils either, and I'm not using fixative, so everything's kind of rubbing off as I rub my hands on there, and that's fine. I'm used to it. We'll go back and darken her eye, her eye makeup. I'm supposed to be doing another free-handed pinup soon, so this is definitely really good practice for me. I'm doing it on another gentleman at my shop, so. So sometimes with the eyes too, if I don't feel like the, the makeup's thick enough, I'll go ahead and darken. all that so you can see her eyes are starting to pop out a lot more making her makeup a lot heavier one thing with tattooing is that the better the con the, the higher the contrast the more it'll stand out on the skin I and mean, i guess that's true for any kind of artwork but you want to make your darks pretty dark and you want to make your lights pretty light if you want things to kind of stand out a little bit more. And this is kind of her lower, lower lid. I kind of like to make the eyes underneath just a little heavier, but as you see, as I, as I get darker, you start to see those little gaps that I was talking about that kind of imply Listen, now this little meat area of the eye. We'll go ahead and bounce some shading off of that. Just to kind of imply a little bit of roundness in the eye. So first eye is pretty much done. Now this eye, I want to go back and do the same thing. Make it heavy. Excuse me if my hand is kind of covering it up. Even more lashes, why not? Wouldn't hurt. So as far as angles to go, you also notice that the eyebrows are also different too. Um, if you're trying to make an angled face, this eyebrow is definitely not going to look like this. You know, um, as the face turns, features change, and you definitely kind of reckon, learn to recognize... Um, how they're supposed to look the more and more you draw this stuff. I've been drawing pinups ever since I was a really, really, really young girl, so kind of comes natural to me. 
my pinup faces are always extremely distorted too. And I'm actually, I'm really happy that people love how distorted they are. Makes, makes my job easier not having to learn like proper proportions to things. Because at the end of the day, I kind of don't care. If she's hot, she's hot. Even if she has a lazy eye, who gives a fuck? Hey, and you know what? Sometimes people are into that type of crazy weird stuff, you know? To each their own. Almost done. And there you go. Let me go ahead and let you get a close up of her eyes. There we go. And that is what you get. Set of eyes. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will do another angle here shortly. Um, or maybe what I'll do is I'll save this so later I can teach you how to how to do my noses and we'll just add actually you know what that's a better idea we'll just add on to this I'll show you how to do a nose and I'll show you how to do lips and then we'll do a full face of a different angle after that I hope you enjoyed my video thank you